a perfect number, most numbers are not uh, perfect. A perfect number, like the number 6, is perfect because if you list out the factors of 6, and if you add together what are called the proper divisors of 6, not including 6 itself, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6, and that's very unusual. The second perfect number is 28, 1, 2, 4, 7, 14. If you add those together, you get 28 which is equal to itself. So most numbers are not perfect. And the next perfect number after that is very large, it's 496, and the one after that is 8,128. So the question is, how would we figure out these, uh, these large, uh, large perfect numbers, uh, and what is the next one? So I'm going to teach you that. First thing is going to be a sneaky trick for figuring out the sum of the factors of any number, like the sum of the factors of 10. We know that 10 is 1, 1 2, 5, 10. So the factors, all of them, add up to 18. One way of adding up the factors of 10 is seeing that 10 is 2 times 5, and then writing 1 plus 2, 1 plus 5. If you did FOIL on this, you'd get 1, 5, 2, 10. In other words, the sum of the factors of 10. But if we don't do FOIL on it, we just do 3 times 6, we get 18, which is the same answer. Now, if the number instead was 20, I'd say that 20 is 2 squared. Actually, let me change it to 100. 2 squared times 5 squared. So there's the prime factorization. If I do 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, we basically start at 1 and work our way up to whatever exponent this is. And we do the same thing with the 5s. The product of these two numbers will be the sum of all the factors. Um, the answer, 4, 6, this is 7. And this is 25, 30, 31. If you multiply those together, you get 200... Uh, 217. The reason that works is if instead of adding these, adding to get 7, adding to get 31, I did like a expansion on it, look what would happen. I get 1 times 1, which is 1. I get 1 times 2, which is 2. I get 1 times 5, which is 5. I'd get 2 times 5, which is 10. I'd get 2 squared times 5, which is 20. I'd get 5 squared times 2, which is 50, and 5 squared 2 squared, which is 100. In other words, it would get me all the, all the terms. So that's a little background, a way of uh, getting some of, the, some of the factors of a number. And I can do this with anything. Let's say my number was 2 to the third times 5 squared times 7 to the first, whatever that number happens to be. The sum of its factors would be 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed times 1 plus 5 plus 5 squared plus 1 plus 7. And if I work out these three numbers, multiply them together, it will be the sum of all the factors of this number, whatever it is. Now, most numbers of the form 2 to the p minus 1, where p is prime, are not prime themselves. However, when p equals 1, 2 to the 1 minus 1 equals 1. We don't consider that prime. But when p is 2, 2 to the 2 minus 1 is 3, so that's prime. When p is 3, 2 to the 3rd minus 1 is 7, that's prime. When p is 4, 2 to the 4th minus 1 is 15, that's not that's not prime. Uh, the next one that works though is when p equals 5, 2 to the 5th minus 1 is, 32, is 31, which is also prime. So for 5, for five 3, and 2, um, we get prime numbers when we do 2 to the p minus 1. Uh, I, th I think these p numbers are, no, they could be anything. So those are three examples. This is called a, a Mersenne prime 
when it, when it is prime, which it is for 2, 3, and 5. Well, there is a theorem that says if 2 to the p minus 1 is prime, then 2 to the, with the p minus 1 as the exponent, times 2 to the p with the minus 1 out there is perfect. It's a theorem. So, for instance, when p equals 2, this becomes 2 to the 2 to the first times 3, which is 6. So it worked. That's, 6 is the first perfect number. When p equals 3, 2 to the p minus 1 is 2 to the 2, which is 4. But 2 to the p um, and then minus 1 is 7, which is 28, which is also a prime. And 5 is the next one that works. If you put 5 in for p, you get 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 5th minus 1, which is 16 times 31, which is 496, which is the next perfect number. So there's our theorem. And that theorem can be proved surprisingly easily. First thing I want you to notice, when you add together the powers of 2, you get 3, you get 7, you get 15. Notice how 1 plus 2 is 3, which happens to be 2 squared minus 1. And 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared is 7, which happens to be 2 to the 3rd minus 1. And 1 plus 2 plus 2 cubed is 15, which happens to be 2 to the 4th minus 1. And in general, plus 2, just say 2 to the n minus 1, is going to be 2 to the n with a minus 1. So that's a little fact about adding up powers of 2. Uh, now we're ready to look at the theorem. So suppose I have the number 2 to the p minus 1 times 2 to the p minus 1, like that. And I want to know what's the sum, whatever this number is, I want to know what the sum of its factors are. Well, assuming that this thing is prime, because that was the condition, if that's prime, when you have a prime number, like if I was actually doing 7 times 4, I would do 1 plus 7, and here I would do, let me call this 2 squared, 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared. Well, same thing here, except instead of 7, I have 2 to the p minus 1, so it's 1 plus 2 to the p minus 1. And over here, just like for 2 squared, it's 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, this is 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, all the way up to 2 to the p minus 1. Well, this guy, the 1's cancel out, it becomes 2 to the p. And this guy, there's the rule that the sum of the powers of 2 is equal to the, the next power of 2, minus 1. So this here is the sum of all the factors of this thing. But I can take this 2 to the p and write it as 2 times 2 to the p minus 1, and leave this guy alone. And what we see here is that the sum of the factors is double, exactly double, double the original thing. But that's what happens with perfect numbers. If I take a number like 6 and I add up all the factors, including the number itself, it will be double the original number. If I take all the factors of 28, including 28, uh, whoops, not 3, 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, 28, I get 56, which is exactly double 28. So, going back to here, when I have a number of this form, where this thing is prime, and then I multiply it by 2 to the p minus 1, this trick of figuring out the sum of the factors results in something that is double the original. And that's, that's what makes something a perfect number. You could say a perfect number, uh, you could say all the factors not including it add up to it, or that all the factors including it add up to double it. And that's that.